crunched up paper house. My friend and I used to always walk through this wonderful, spacious park when we were younger. It was just full of trees and really nicely maintained. In this large park, there was an abandoned mansion. I can't really say how long it had been there, but on this day, the front door of the mansion was wide open. The two of us decided to check out what was inside the place. As we inched closer to the door, the very first thing we noticed was that the mansion's floor was absolutely covered with crumpled up pieces of paper. We looked at each other and then observed that there was no furniture. Nothing except for those wrinkled balls of paper. The mansion had six rooms on the main floor. Every single room we entered had more scrunched up pieces of paper. We decided to, you know, open up one of the paper balls and see what was inside. I guess our curiosity just got the better of us. I picked up a single wrinkled piece as my friend picked up another one. I unfolded my paper, smoothing out its bends and dents. At that moment, it was, it was almost like a piece of a rainbow emerged before our eyes. Suddenly, I was standing next to a large window in one of the upstairs rooms of the house. I was looking outside onto the park. I looked down at the piece of paper. It read, Look outside the large window that oversees the park in the upstairs parlor. I dropped my piece of paper and it fluttered gracefully to the ground. Meanwhile, I just stared at my open hands in a bout of horror. Dazed and utterly perplexed, I found my way downstairs and met up with my friend. He was standing in the kitchen and sitting around a large table that had not been there before. Where did that come from, I wondered. My friend stared at his open piece of paper and reread the words several times before he looked at me and turned the page my way. It said, go to the kitchen, sit at the round table. We stared at each other for a few moments, vaguely afraid. But then we began to chuckle. Within seconds, we were laughing our asses off, marveling at our newfound game. We could hardly believe what had happened. But being as young as we were, the mystery was endlessly exciting. We decided again to open up another scrunched up piece of paper. As we opened the crumpled up papers on the floor, we experienced the same sudden flash of rainbow colors. But this time... I was lying down in the field behind the mansion. When I peered into the paper to my right, it said, Lie down in the field behind the mansion. I giggled uncontrollably. After a few minutes of running around the house, I found my friend collecting multiple balls of paper in his arms, eager to experience more of the same strange exciting phenomenon. We both got a gist of what was happening at this point. We had no idea how it was possible, but... We just decided to have more fun with it. The supernatural always had a way of captivating our hearts. After a few more run-throughs of these strange mini teleportation devices, I began to feel apprehensive. I wondered if, at one point, I would be placed somewhere that I didn't want to be, or made to do something that I wouldn't enjoy. We continued, though. Minute after minute, we unfolded pieces of paper traveling through bedrooms, closet, trees. But then, after having been on the roof of the mansion, I stood before my friend dead on the living room floor. I didn't scream. I, I couldn't. Murder him. I read on my crumpled up paper. I felt a surge of vomit and bile rising into my throat, but nothing came out. But the sickness in my throat spread to my stomach, head, and my heart. I didn't know what to do. At this point, I began to scream and shout, praying to God for this to just be a nightmare. I wanted it to go away. I wanted to rewind our day and begin outside again, walking, talking, together underneath the trees. All I could do was hide his body in a cupboard. I willed myself to be calm and hesitantly unfolded another piece of paper in the hopes that the problem would correct itself. Once again, I saw the color of the rainbows, and I found myself standing behind a tree several meters away from the house. 
I could clearly see the front door within a few instances. I saw both myself and friend walk through that door. I began to wonder if I had died or if I was having an out-of-body experience. I looked at the sheet in my hand and the only words scrawled upon it were, time will repeat itself, a paradox will take place, and it will be allowed. This gave me an idea. In my pocket remained the piece of paper that made me kill my friend. Without even looking at it, I crumpled it back up. I quietly followed my other self, who had separated from my friend in the house as he explored the rooms. As I crept behind him, he turned around very suddenly. Before he could even utter a syllable, I forced the paper open in front of my eyes and again saw the flash of rainbow colors. I was... I was able to kill my other self. The laws of time allowed me to take over my dead self place in this world, and also because of the fact that it was allowed to happen. As it was written on the second piece of paper I had on me, which reversed time, it, it must have had control over time and paradoxes, which made me now the alive present day me of my other self. I hid the limp, bleeding, other dead myself in the cupboard upstairs in the bathroom to rot. To my great relief, I heard my friend call my name from the downstairs. My friend who managed to stay alive and well. My best friend. When I went downstairs, he greeted me excitingly, smiling childishly, and being blissfully unaware of the entire situation. I pretended that nothing had happened and in a heartbeat, I told him that the house creeped me out and I think it would have been much better if we left. After that day, we never went near that mansion again. I don't know if anyone saw or heard anything that happened between us, but I did recently hear from another friend that the house was going to be demolished. I can tell you with great certainty that while this news was a relief, I absolutely dreaded the prospect that my own corpse would be uncovered in the bathroom cabinet. I would like to thank my $10 and above patrons in order, of course. Dan R., Paul Z., Mr. Swiston, Official Jerboa, Chaos X, JY, Pyromancer, Hayden MH, and Ethan A. Thank you guys very, very much. I appreciate it. And if you want your name read off and you want access to some Patreon-only content, go down to the Patreon down below. Thank you guys.